Gotham's yours, sweetheart. Nothing's standing in your way now. The Penguin is one of those shows that I think is just going to be seen as a sort of like archetype of how you do a show so brilliantly. And I really have to give it up first and foremost before we get into the ending to Lauren LaFranc, who is the showrunner of the show and just did an amazing and incredible job with it from beginning to end. Always captivated each episode. I was waiting to see where we were going next and I've been watching it weekly. I just didn't know if I should do weekly episode recaps, but I did want to talk about the ending and the show as a whole. And where do we go from here? right? Because that's a huge thing here. So I won't go throughout the whole uh, season or even most of the episode because I feel like you've been caught up and I'm trying to not really make these videos too long where I'm just recapping things anymore. Let's just get straight into the ending, right? So pretty much what we saw this show like really was is about Oswald becoming the penguin that we know from the comics, right? The kingpin, the one that runs everything in Gotham. And we saw that his whole transition into power was really fueled by wanting his mother's approval or love for him to feel that she is proud of him for everything he is doing and accomplishing and along the way King Vic a poor man who was pretty much devastated when his family was lost due to the Riddler his actions in the Batman with exploding the whole city now ultimately we saw by the end that they were caught in the middle of a transition of power if you will between the Maronis and the Falcones and Sophia Falcone who was played brilliantly was just the one who was going to bring Oswald down when she found out that Oswald was the one that killed her brother. Through a lot of trials and tribulations, we ultimately saw that the end came when we saw that Sophia was ready to give it all up in order to just make Oswald pay and feel the pain that she felt for her brother's loss. And she was going to do this by hurting him where it hurts the most with his mother, by making his mother realize and come to the conclusion that yes, indeed, Oswald killed his brothers when they were all young. Ultimately, his mother had a stroke after this confrontation, and we saw that she will now just be in a vegetative state. But Oswald and Vic ultimately get gangs to turn on one another and all work for Oswald by the end of it. And then we see Sophia gets thrown into to the wolves, if you will, by Oswald as he frames her for everything that's happened from Salvatore Moroni's death to the explosions and all of the other crimes. And now she is thrown back into Arkham where she was at the beginning of the show. And Oswald has ascended to the top and on the way to the top, he has killed Vic because he says he doesn't need any more family or to feel anything anymore because this is the next step, next level. And we see as Oswald's now in that penthouse, he promised his mother at the beginning of the show, but she is in a vegetative state she's still looking out the window right and we see that eve is back in oswald's life who we thought i thought eve was gonna not really make it back because of everything that happened between her and sophia and her telling sophia where uh he was keeping his mother but we see eve is back and is now being paid to just pretend to be oswald's mother and tell him how proud she is of him in a very dark ending for sure but it's not all dark as there is a light shining but it is the batman's bat signal that we see that was my best way of recapping the whole series and not really getting this video to over 20 minutes right but no pretty much at the end of the penguin we saw that the penguin was able to take down all of the gangs the maronis the falcones the gigantes zao and everybody else and ascend to the very top and have everybody in the palm of his hand if you will the only thing though is that the one thing he really wanted was to make his mother proud and he still wasn't able to do that as now she is just in a vegetative state a state she told oswald repeatedly she did not want to be in but oswald cannot let her go and it is almost an Oedipus Rex type feel that Oswald has to his character right he is really infatuated with his mother and her approval and everything and will do whatever it takes for her to just be happy or have those words be said to him I am proud of you I almost kind of felt like this was a sort of twist on Mr. Freeze and how he keeps his wife in sort of a frozen state of sorts but more on that when we talk about the Batman 2 and what exactly could that look like we'll get a little bit into that here but I think one of the things that we really realize at the end is that Vic was not going to make it and that's something they talked about in the uh, recap to the show that they always do at the end. Lauren LaFranc who is the showrunner was talking about how Oswald sort of felt vulnerable in that position where Vic saw him at his lowest and also Matt Reeves talks about this is that the penguin is some
somebody who just wants to sort of cut all of those strings. He knows that in order for him to become the ruthless and maniacal like leader of Gotham, he has to let go of anything that brings him down. And what brings him down is these feelings. So he had to let go of all of those feelings. And really, Bick was the last one. His mother's not really there anymore. He's lost pretty much everybody close around him. And now he thinks to himself, well, you know, I can't have myself come down like this anymore. And I'm starting to care for this kid a little bit. I think I need to take him out and we saw that Vic ultimately was taken out. I was hoping we see Vic in the Batman too but that's not the case. Now I think something that's interesting to note here as well is that there is a lot being set up here because Sophia goes into Arkham Asylum right but then she gets a card a letter from her half sister Selina Kyle which we found out was her half sister in the Batman when we found out that uh, Selina Kyle's father was actually the Falcone head which was a very interesting uh, twist to have. Now we don't really know what the letter says or what is implied but I could expect to see Sophia Falcone be a part of the Batman in some capacity. Hopefully we'll see what that means. And I also think that that definitely sets up more for the Penguin 2, which is apparently going to happen. And I'm very curious to how exactly a Selena Kyle and Sophia Falcone like team up would look like, right? Especially with the ending of the Batman and everything. I think that we could definitely see that this is going to create a lot more, I would say, drama, a lot more tension throughout the city, right? Because Oswald seems to feel like they're at the top and that no one's going to come for them but at the end of the show we do see that there is indeed a bat signal saying well maybe it's not going to be that easy and we'll get to that bat signal in a bit and also apparently batman almost made a cameo but let's talk about some of the things that lafranc said about the ending how it was sort of foreshadowed at the beginning as well she says everything that i put in the first episode i put purposefully knowing where we were going ultimately wanted to have oz kill vic by strangling him on the same park bench where they once shared slushies in the premiere which she calls suicide slushies it's not about how he's killing vic because he thinks vic failed him or someone manipulated him. He's killing him because he can't bear the fact that he actually does have that closeness with the kid because that makes him weak. He's basically trying to strangle his vulnerability. She also talks about the fact that Oz drove Sophia back to Arkham in a way that they had been years prior where he was her driver. There's references in the final scenes between Oz and Sophia from conversations they had earlier in the season as well. And this is when she's talking about the fact that he is the one that's sort of driving her there. And I think that was such an interesting like turn of events right because we're sort of bonded together through this driving and now we have Oz driving her to her final like burial if you will and something they also talked about in the um, after show was that there was a sort of feeling for Sophia that death was in fact better than Arkham and now she's getting like the worst thing she could ever imagine going back to that place well she also talks about the fact about Selena Khan Sophia Falcone or Sophia Gigante now being half sisters she says fans know that they're half sisters so it felt important important to acknowledge it in this way and set it up for potential future but even more than that to end Sophia's arc back in Arkham she's in this terrible state of mind and yet this letter from Selena feels like this inkling of hope so we're definitely interested to see how that's going to be developed right in the future. LaFranc also talked about having the bat signal appear at the end where she pretty much says that she did want to launch into Matt's second film. I very much like the idea of the Batman undercutting the strange delusional scenario scenario that Oz created for himself at the end to merit all of his previous actions and to say I finally made it and then for us to say maybe not maybe you haven't and that's really what I thought as well and Matt Reeves also had talked previously to Entertainment Weekly to talk about how this sort of sets up the next Batman film by saying we're kind of flicking you at the end to say the story's not over the idea that Oz and these characters could be on a collision course at some point with Batman that's of course out there. So we wanted to leave you with some sense of that without overshadowing it, that this is really the completion of the story. Earlier on, there were some reports apparently that there was going to be a show centered on Barry Keoghan's Joker for the next HBO series. However, they've pretty much said that they can't say what the exact timeline is yet or really give any like confirmation to that. We're leaving Oz and Gotham in a state where the city is still trying to heal itself from what happened. It's also a time, as you see, where it goes on with Vic and Crown Point where the city's deeply wounded. As we're entering the movie, all of that stuff is still broiling. The repercussions of what happened 
happened as a result of the last movie and what happened during this gang war are very much the table setter for the way we're entering into the Batman part two. And so speaking of Batman, there was this idea that we would have a Batman cameo, apparently according to Matt Reeves, who goes on to say, over the course of writing the season, we discussed many times whether or not there might be some cross through that would feel earned. We tried a few different ideas conceptually, nothing that was ever written ultimately, but nothing seemed quite to gel in a way that felt earned. They also said that there was a scene they were thinking about where Batman shows up in front of Vic, who of course was the right hand man to Oz. But they say even that ended up throwing things off too much. Lauren LaFranc also says we wanted our characters to be the predominant people that you're following in this show. Anything that started to detract from that wasn't servicing the type of show we wanted to do. They did say that pretty much the bad signal as it closed to the Batman is something that's interesting. So I think that there's definitely a lot here. I think that a lot of how the Penguin pretty much was established as this character at the beginning who was just going to be a second man and all of that would never make it to the top and sort of his drive was trying to prove them wrong but also in that light turned into a man of the people as Sofia Falcone says. That I think was a very interesting uh, dynamic to have between uh, the Penguin as well as all the other like top gang officials right. They never tapped into that sort of like Robin Hood type character that the Penguin became to these other like gang members and I think that ultimately leads to loyalty for the Penguin even more because they feel seen they feel that they can make it up and I think it's going to be interesting to see where the Penguin goes in the Batman part 2 which Colin Farrell says he has like, several scenes in that movie we're still not entirely sure what that movie could look like or be but once we get some more information I'll make a video talking about it but let me know what you thought about the Penguin if you enjoyed the show and all of that the ending how it serves up for the Batman part 2 and also what do you think that the Batman almost made an appearance in the Penguin would you think that would have distracted you from the show or do you think it was necessary i don't know i just felt like we would have seen the batman at some point especially with everything going on those big explosions and all that but i i still understand why they didn't put the batman i feel like it would have taken away from it and i still think the show is great and brilliant without the batman so we'll see anyways follow us for more on the things you love if you want to talk more theories about the penguin i do want to talk about what a potential season two could look like that'll probably come out later this week but i'm still very excited we got a new hbo show coming out this weekend which is doom prophecy which i'm excited about maybe i'll do weekly videos on that one if y'all want to see that or should i wait to the end we'll see but anyways hit that subscribe button notification bell follow us on instagram on twitter all that good stuff i'll see you next time stay safe stay positive